everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. On this planet today, there are over 3,000 species of snake. These snakes are thought to have evolved around 142 million years ago, alongside many fearsome dinosaurs. Today, over 1.1 million people own pet snakes. As all snakes are cold-blooded and predatory, they can be a very demanding pet to have, as not only do you need heat and lighting to keep them alive, but the larger species also need substantial amounts of food. Snakes are found almost everywhere on Earth, but as their ectotherms, they haven't made it to some colder parts of the planet. Out of the over 3,000 species of snake, around 600 of these are venomous. This venom can be extremely toxic in some cases, which gives them an edge over their prey. Over the millions of years that snakes have been on this planet, they've been able to evolve and adapt, and now they can be found in almost all types of ecosystem. There are your terrestrial, jungle-loving snakes, there are snakes that can be found in arid, rocky, deserty areas, then there are your semi-aquatic and aquatic snakes. Being an aquatic snake has its upsides and its downsides. There is an abundance of food in most water sources, but there's also an abundance of predators and competition. Today I will be focusing on these aquatic snake species, as I'll be going through four aquatic snakes and one sneaky imposter. And for our first aquatic snake, we'll be heading over to Eurasia, as we have the grass snake. The grass snake is one of the most common snake species in Eurasia, and it has quite a confusing name, as although they can be found in some grassland areas, they tend to spend most of their time in and around water. The grass snake's preferred habitat normally consists of woodland borders, close to ponds, rivers and lakes. When in the water, the grass snake tends to be a very strong swimmer and is a very efficient hunter in fresh water. The grass snake is non-venomous and generally kills its prey with the bite alone, or unfortunately for the prey items, it sometimes eats them while they're still alive. In their freshwater hunting grounds, they primarily feed on amphibians, such as common frogs and toads. But on land, they're opportunistic feeders, feeding on small mammals, birds, and even the occasional insect and earthworm. And on this diet, they reach a very respectable size of around 1.8 meters. Even though they reach this impressive size, they still have a large number of predators in their natural habitat, as birds are known to pick off large numbers of this species, as well as foxes and badgers. If you were to walk up to a grass snake and try to pick it up, it does have a few defense strategies, as this snake is known to play dead, which may deter some picky predators that don't want to eat a rotting snake. If this defense mechanism doesn't work and they're picked up by a predator, they will excrete a foul-smelling odor from their anal glands. Because of their mostly aquatic lifestyle, many people now refer to this snake as the water snake, and personally, I think this is more of a fitting name. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to the Indo-Pacific, as we have the yellow-lipped sea crate. Now, sea crates are types of venomous sea snakes, which thrive in the world's oceans. The sea crates have a few adaptations to help them hunt in our oceans. Their tails are usually flattened and paddle-like, making them surprisingly speedy through the water. They're also known to hold their breath around 30 minutes while hunting underwater. In the warm waters of the Indo-Pacific, this species mainly feeds on fish and surprisingly eels. Adult females are significantly larger than the males and prefer to hunt in deeper water for large conga eels. Adult males tend to hunt in shallower water, where they tend to target moray eels. The sea crate's body shape is perfect for rooting around corals and even attracts the attention of predatory fish. A species such as the giant trevally and goatfish tend to follow these sea crates as they tend to pick off smaller fish that the sea crates miss. To tackle its rather scary prey items, the yellow-lipped sea crate has some very potent venom. This venom is known to be 10 times more harmful than rattlesnake venom and works by attacking the nervous system, causing paralysis and even cardiac failure. Despite this, attacks on humans are extremely rare and this snake tends to be very docile on land. The yellow-lipped sea crate is semi-aquatic and after hunting tends to digest its food on land. And as their prey items can be so large, this can take weeks at a time. Just like their fellow reptiles, the sea turtles, these sea crates are known to return to the same beach each time they digest their food, rest and lay eggs. In a research project carried out in Fiji, the population of sea crates was moved 5 kilometers away from their home and within 31 days they returned back to the same beach. So although this is one of the most venomous snakes in the world, it's very unlikely to bite you. Before our next species, we'll be heading to South America as we have the green anaconda. The green anaconda is the heaviest and one of the longest snakes in the world, as they can reach a whopping 5.2 meters or 17 feet long and can weigh up to 97 kilograms or 215 pounds. And that's around the same weight as a warthog or a sloth bear. Anacondas prefer to live in swamps, marshes and slow moving streams. Although anacondas can be quite cumbersome on land, they are sleek and stealthy killers in the water. The nasal openings on the top of their head make it easy for them to breathe while mostly submerged. They tend to remain completely still while submerged at the edge of water sources. And as this is such a large snake, they're known to have very large prey. Juveniles tend to feed on fish, amphibians and birds, whereas larger specimens tend to feed on mammals and reptiles, such as tapirs, deer, capybaras and even caiman. Many snakes on earth have the potential to kill humans with their venom. Even though the green anaconda isn't venomous, it's one of the few species of snake that could actually kill a human and maybe even eat one. Although this is a real possibility, there are no verified reports of an anaconda eating a person. In some very rare instances, the species can be found in the pet 
trade. This isn't just bad for the anaconda itself, as barely anyone will be able to provide the space and care needed for a giant anaconda, but it's also potentially disastrous for non-native ecosystems, as there's been a few sightings of this species in Florida's Everglades. The Burmese python has proven how much damage a large snake can cause in an ecosystem where it doesn't belong, and another larger species of snake that can also eat alligators definitely wouldn't help. Because of this risk, they are now a prohibited species, and in some cases there's actually been a bounty on this species. So the heaviest snake in the world is very much a water-loving species. But for our next species, we'll be heading up to the central United States, as we have the copper belly water snake. This snake is normally found in lowland swamps and other warm waters, and in these waters it is a very efficient hunter, mainly feeding on amphibians such as frogs, tadpoles and salamanders, and even taking fish and crayfish. On this diet they can reach a maximum size of around 1.6 meters or 65 inches, and they are another non-venomous species. Unfortunately today the copper belly water snake is listed as vulnerable to extinction. One of the main reasons behind this is habitat loss due to filling of their lowland swamp areas, or pollution caused by urbanized areas or agriculture. In North America there are also many predators that like to feed on these snakes, such as snapping turtles, birds, otters, raccoons, minks, and even large fish and other snakes such as the cottonmouth snakes. Because of their decline in number they are now a protected species, and any collection, harassment or disturbance of these snakes can lead to legal action. And hopefully with more protection over their natural habitat, we'll hopefully see this snake's population increase in the future. But for our final species, we'll be heading over to the Indo-Pacific, as we have our imposter, the oscillated snake eel. Despite its slightly confusing name, this species is actually a fish. They're part of a family known as the snake eels, and if you're swimming in the waters of the Indo-Pacific and encounter this animal, it will be very hard to tell if it's a snake, or in fact an eel. They tend to move across the substrate in a very similar way to how snakes move on land. This has led to many divers confusing them with sea snakes, hence how they got their name. The oscillated snake eel tends to be found around seagrass beds, sandy plains, and reef flats. They spend most of their day buried in the substrate, before leaving their burrows at dusk to feed on crustaceans, other snake eels, and small fish. Most of these prey items are buried in the sediment, and it uses its downward facing nostrils to find them. Unlike the true sea snakes, they are not venomous, and when approached by divers, they tend to dig a burrow tail first to escape danger. And although it's not a true snake, this imposter is a very snake-like fish. But that's about it for this video. If you have any suggestions for other videos, then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.